my name is Rochelle Lum, and I'm going to show you how I make a woman doll. First, I take cotton, and then I'm going to roll it in my fingers. I'm going to shape it into a spindle shape. A spindle shape. From this, I'm going to cut it into an egg shape. The Japanese paper doll heads are bigger at the bottom and smaller at the top. So, an egg shape like this. Then I'm going to take my washi paper and I'm going to cover it. This is special paper that are made for making the paper doll heads. It's made from plant fibers that are pretty strong. So what I want to do next is I'm going to twist it both ends down. So I'll get something that looks like this. My final product. Now I will show you how I make the hair. There's a flat paper I call Kozo. It's for mulberry plants. That's pretty strong fibers in them because when I crunch it, it's not going to tear. This is going to create the hairline for the dough. So you can see there are hairlines going down the paper. Then from this, I'm going to cut it in several pieces. I'm going to cut into a piece of back hair. I'm going to have a front hair. And I'm going to have a top hair, which I call Shimada. So now I'm going to show you how I make the back hair. Okay, it's a little tough sometimes. Okay, now when I tie it together inward like this, it's going to form a shape that looks like this. So what I have is from this shape, I'm going to tie it together and it's going to form the back here. Next, I'm going to do the front here. I'm going to take the, the thinnest, the smallest strip, and I'll show you how I do the front here. Oops. Okay, I'm going to squeeze it between my fingers and onto the table. Okay, and off it. And then when I tie it together inward, like this, I'm going to create a shape that looks like this. So this is the front here. You can see it. Okay. Next, I'm going to show you how I make the top here, the Shimada. Since it has one side, one wider piece, and one skinnier piece, when I roll it together, you'll see what happens when I crunch it and tie it together. Okay. Oops, here we go. Okay, here we go. When I tie it together, it's going to split apart to a, a front and a back. So it's going to look something like this. Front and back. And if I put an ornament, a um, misuhiki with it, then it'll look something like this. 
It's a very common hairstyle you'll see in Edo period and even today. Okay? So the next thing we do is to assemble. So going through the back here, on the top there's a little tunnel here. So what goes through here is going to be the top of the head. It's going to go through. Then we take the front here. It's going to also go through the hole. And then at the very end, we have the shimada that's going to go through the hole. So everything goes through the hole on top of the head. This little hole here. It's going to look like this. And everything is stuck through. All the pieces have gone through. I can close her up. So when I close her up, I use uh, a neck paper, which is the same as a face paper. And I'm going to slowly start winding it down. Okay, it's closed up. And then I'm going to pick up the front little neck strand. So once I finish winding everything down, it's going to look something like this, the finished product. Then I can put her in her body cotton. Her bodies are all made out of cotton. And since she's a woman, she has waist. Okay. Now before I can dress her, I'll show you how I make the kimono. Kimono, I choose a kimono paper, a lining to the kimono paper, and an undergarment paper. And also I have my pattern. So I had pre-cut this to show you. So I have the underlining, undergarment and the lining. So I would take a scissor and cut in to, to make this for the sleeves. Fill the bot, fill this up. Take the kimono paper. Take my scissor, cut in and cut in. Then I fill the bottom and this one. So it looks something like this. And then I take everything off. Recrease the paper and the lining is going to get inserted into the kimono paper. So it's going to go in this way and then the undergarment gets attached to the back. So what you see is something that was going to look like this. So the lining has been attached to the kimono paper and the undergarment is just attached to the back. Then, the next thing you do is you have to um, lower down and make the collar for the kimono. Then I make sure that the lining and the undergarment also lines up with the top of the kimono collar. Then she's ready for dressing. Now this is the fun part. Get the shoulder cotton. Now I teach classes at the Japanese Cultural and Community Center. Um, in Northern California, in San Francisco. And I also team teach with another person named Yuri Nakamura. She's the one who taught me and now we work together. So it take, it'll take you like um, three to four hours to make a Tao, but it's not impossible. So um, it's a lot of fun. So I hope you can come and join us. So when you dress a Tao, it's pretty much the same as dressing a a regular human being, you have to remember a live person. You write, make sure that the kimono um, overflapping is left over right. So I do the shoulders, then it's shoulder to elbow. I mean, yeah, shoulder to elbow. It just goes inward, shoulder to elbow. Pull her head just a little bit up. Now 
she's almost done because what I need to do is put her obi on. So, here's your friend Obi. Front of her Obi. The women's Obi's are more of a little higher. This is the back of it. It goes inside. And, oops, one last piece. Okay, when this is all glued together, it's going to look something like this. So thank you very much for coming to my lecture demonstration on how to make a Japanese paper doll, a woman. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact JCCNC in San Francisco and ask me about washi ningyo or our classes we have. Thank you. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.